Hello. <laughs> Welcome back to this bed we made. Uh, we sure did make this bed. Now we gotta lie in it. Let's see. Um, exploring Bernard's office. So, oh, clean. Eh. I'd love to snoop first. Champagne, right? Cherry brandy. Mm. That's it? Kind of wish I worked here when Raymond was in charge. Sounds like the hotel was very different back then. The Clarington Hotel changes hands. Raymond Leduc, 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 retired yesterday after more than 20 years at the helm of the Clarington Hotel, located in downtown Montreal. Founded by Leduc's father, Fernand, Fernand? Fernand. In 1921, the hotel was one of Montreal's most respected establishments until the Great Depression and Fernand Leduc's death in 1929. Ever since, guests have noticed a drop in the hotel standards. Oh my. My wife and I used to stay at the Clarington every year for our anniversary, said Mrs. Grayson, Mr. Grayson, who first visited the hotel in 1925. We've stopped coming two, three years ago because of the, all the <laughs> unsavory characters hanging around. My wife was quite afraid. Despite Raymond Leduc's retirement, the establishment will remain in the Leduc family as his brother Bernard is now taking over the reins after many years as the hotel's concierge. Interviewed in the lobby, Mr. Leduc promised great changes would come for the Clarington. Hmm. And he framed that, huh? He wants that on his wall. Well, just look at these distinguished gentlemen. <laughs> and a young Bernard. <laughs> Sophie the Shade. Wait, wait, wait. So, is that Raymond? Who's that? And that's Bernard? Mr. Leduc, my employer has made the following requests. To avoid unwanted attention, his identity should remain secret to both guests and staff. The temperature in room 602 should be kept at exactly 22 degrees. His dog should be fed the very best roast beef. His room should be cleaned every day at 11.30 a.m. on the dot. Eggs should be banned from his room service orders. No one should disturb him between the hours of 4 and 5 p.m. More requests shall follow once my employer takes possession of his room. Thank you. Weird. Gotta make sure to put stuff back where it was so we're not being suspicious. <gasps> what is this? Linda's? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh, 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 open. I don't know. I just wanted to see what. Ew. Close. Close. What's he been working on? This does not look like a nice brotherly check-in. I had no idea things were this bad between Bernard and Raymond. Dear brother, I thank you for your invaluable input, but I need, need I remind you the terms of our agreement. I did my part. I got you out of jail and have ensured that news of your deviant ways would not leak. Now, I expect you to keep your side of the bargain and stay out of my way. You are not in charge of the hotel anymore. I have worked relentlessly these past few years to return the Clarington to its former glory. A great challenge considering the poor state you left it in. I'm glad Father never got to see how you so shamelessly destroyed his great legacy. As for me, I will be dead too before I listen to a single word of advice from you. You ask I lower our prices, but I can tell you I plan on doing just the opposite. My guests will only be la crumb de la crumb. Your deviant friends can find themselves another place for their sinful debaucheries. Enjoy your retirement. <laughs> Holy shit, Bernard. Okay, so that must have been their father, and that's Raymond, and that's Bernard. 
<laughs> Looking evil as fuck. <laughs> I'm guessing he takes after their mother. <laughs> Jesus Christ. this blizzard, Bernard's office will be a skating rink by the end of the day. Best to avoid that. Opposing something that could help so many people just because it's close to your hotel? This is ridiculous. Dear Mr. Weston, I would like to thank you again for agreeing to this partnership between the Clarington Hotel and Weston's department store. Thanks to your generous help, renovations are well underway and the hotel has never looked better. You should come visit soon when your busy schedule allows for it, of course. Crossed out. On another note, it has come to my attention that you have formed a group of local businessmen to oppose the construction of the new mental hospital. After working so hard to elevate the Clarington standards, I cannot allow a band of cuckoos to move in my backyard. Should you accept, it would be an honor and a privilege to join your fight. Cordially. No. Yours sincerely, Bernard Leduc. Handwritten by Eugene. Enjoy the cold, you cold-hearted prick. <laughs> wow. Uh, what does that mean that it's... Oh. Aha. Let's get you to that vent. Yeah. Okay. We can... Oh. No, take... Just take it. Oh, wait. Sorry. Pick up. Clean, clean, clean. I mean, should we throw that away or? Mm, no, I think let's just leave it there. What do we get? Looks like my hunch was correct. Eugene was here to fix that window, and lucky for me, he left a screwdriver behind. I get the feeling he won't be needing it anytime soon. Getting the vent open should be easy enough now. Okay, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Is this another example of I'm saving someone by throwing this away? Because I don't want Eugene to get fired. All right, let's look. None of us like Bernard. Okay. None of us like him. Um... But I'm not just going to let people get fired for s stupid reasons. Uh, check on room 602. Ask Eugene to fix radiator. Call Weston's office. Apologize to Mr. and Mrs. Drake for Valentine's Ball. Mishap. Speak with contractor about cost overruns. Call Weston's office again. Decide winner for employee of the month for award. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. So yes, Bernard is indeed a tiny little man. Andrew was already covering for you. That's because I was in the ladies' room. That's no excuse to. It's my time of the month. I, uh, You're married, aren't you? So you know how it is. I have to go more often. He's got something and, to prove. Oh, sometimes he's I dangerous. Stand furniture and, and don't get me started on all the. That's enough details. I, Miss Bellavit, what were you doing in my office? Cleaning. Hmm. Uh, uh, I was looking for a screwdriver. I was looking for a screwdriver, to fix a loose vent. A loose vent? Well, that sounds like a job for Eugene, doesn't it? And and, and why on earth would you look for a screwdriver in my office? Because I knew Eugene was just in your office. I thought Eugene might be there. Well, I don't ever want to see you in my office without permission again. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Drake has asked mm. to see you. I did. All right. God, he just can't get enough of me, can he? Just indulge him. Apologize one more time for Friday's mishap. Do whatever needs to be done. We cannot afford to lose such loyal guests. Okay, fine. That was a close one. Yeah, I had a few cold sweats. 
But at least I found what I was looking for. Good. Well, if you need me, I'll be attending to the whims and worries of our entitled client... Guests. Don't be a stranger. Beth. I'd love to take her out to a clandestine glove lunch. I did manage to talk my way out. Okay, Sorry, great. How big did you say your party was again? So, let's go back up, right? Because the vent was on the fifth floor, right? Oh, I guess I'm free to disturb room 508 now. But that's where Bernard and Linda were. Ew. <laughs> Let's open the vent first. Wait. Oh. See. Oh, no, come on. Nope. This is kind of finicky. You have to like click and then unscrew with the mouse wheel. Hold. Okay, to move it. All right. Here we go. Ah, more code. All right, let's translate this. <laughs> okay, let's see. This is fun. Um, did I not have more? Oh. This is S. We got uh, tilde. It's T. Which is M. I bet you that's yeah. Meet me. Uh, what else do we let's see? Two. We have a two, that's an A. Oop, nope, that's an A. Michael. Uh, squiggly squiggly is an H. Tonight. That's gotta be Michael. Probably will in my room Michael will be sleeping we need to discuss meet me tonight in my room plan. Michael will be sleeping we need to discuss our plan <sighs> Hotel reception desk, Beth speaking. It's me. Oh, hello, Bean. Anything new to report? I found another message written in secret code. What does it say? Meet me tonight in my room. Michael will be sleeping. We need to discuss our plan. Michael? Who's that? Another husband? I don't know. It's the first time I'm hearing of a Michael in this story. Hmm. Let me check the log. There's a Michael staying in room 507. 507 is one? Room? But Wait, she that's doesn't have I can a husband. Go in now. I know that was 508. Oh, 
Michael must be her son. I got him some extra blankets the other day so he could build a fort. Hmm. Could Marcella? Yes. Uh, no, never mind. <laughs> so, what's next? I guess I should go have a look at 507, but it's not on my list. There isn't There's any more. Wait, that is 507. Before. Well, I could call the room to make sure no one's there. Good idea. Hang on. the all clear bean head on over thanks Beth I'll call you back Ooh, okay I do want to make sure though I did close the vent right okay I'm good no it was this one that's the one that was yeah okay wait a second can I clean that look how dirty Sophie. Okay, let's go in here first because. <laughs> Gross. Uh, ew. <laughs> We're not gonna clean these at all. We're just gonna. You know what? Fine. What is all that? Are you, can you clean these? That's the same champagne he had in his office. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Linda. I mean, you know what? I guess get it, girl. Like, whatever. I don't... <laughs> if Bernard is what butters your biscuit, then go for it. I just think he's the type to retaliate. So be careful. I just gotta make sure, you know? <gasps> it's all the fucking flyers. Let's throw them away. The closet. Yeah, you had to hide it in the closet, Linda, huh? <sighs> Can I just throw these away? I haven't been doing it, but I realize now that I guess I can. Okay, I don't want to throw that away. That's cute. But I will a million percent throw all the fucking flyers away. The, this already happened, right? So I guess we can throw that away now. Alright, 507. That's the same cherry brandy that Bernard had. Is it in there? What's that? Mr. Cr 
Cruz, huh? Mr. Hector Cruz. Numbers, <gasps> dates, times. What does it all mean? What does that mean? 1824. Is that a safe combination? Can I move this? No. I shouldn't, um, I shouldn't fuck shit up though because they're gonna know. Oh, is that a, that's a lesbian love affair. The cherry brandy, okay. Um, got cigarettes, red lion. Okay, don't clean things in here because I don't want them to know I was here. The winds and the leaves that day made a sound that sounded like, a sound that sounded like, really, Anne? The winds and the leaves that day made the tree whistle a soft melody that came to my ear. I remember every part of this day, for it was the day we met. Jesus, this is bad. <laughs> I was looking for my cat when I heard the sound of the leaves blowing in the wind, like a melody to my ear, on this summer day where I met you. Oh, she's writing a love letter and having, having issues. Wait, 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 there was something in there. Or is that just that? That look in your eyes. What does it mean? And who is this from? You don't need to know my name, but you've seen me. I recognize that look in your eyes when you checked in. You and I don't need to make a fuss out of this. You keep your wits about you and I'll do the same. Don't pick it up. Ah, that's so sweet. I didn't do much, but I'm glad it meant something to you. Dear Sophie, thank you so much for taking care of our room every day and bringing us extra sheets. Michael and I wanted to give you a little something before we left. Sincerely, A. Oh, that's a tip for me. Okay, we're not taking it yet, though. Does that look like a person? Okay, it's the fort. That freaked me out. Why is it empty, though? Mount Royal College, Montreal, 1947. Wait, can I open that? Lots of things. Hear them pop. Free yo-yo inside. Okay, so it's Michael's yo-yo. Wait a second. Oh, oh, okay. So that's to visit the cereal factory. I was gonna say, he already has the yo-yo. He didn't send it in. Belt. Oh, a dog. It's Greta. The dog is Greta. Locked. Mm. The key has to be around here somewhere. Wait, so there's two keys. Adam or Eve, can she resist the ultimate temptation? Bridget Boswell, a confession of a sh shocking and forbidden love. <gasps> Adam or Eve, a heartbreaking decision. Should Rose stay in a marriage that no longer makes her happy or seek refuge in the arms of the woman who truly understands her? She has tasted the forbidden fruit years ago and now she is all she, is all she can think of. But what will her family and society as a whole think of her if she turns to a life of sin? Should she be condemned or e for even entertaining the thought of leaving her husband or pitied for having to make such a heartbreaking decision? Bridget Boswell is the prolific author behind such novels as Anna Rumi and The Lonely Girl. 
Once again. So a husband can abuse his wife and just get away with it? And people like Linda still think divorce is wrong? Yeah, Ugh. fucking beats me too. Richard Lynn Carter, Attorneys at Law. Dear Anne, I have met with Louis and he has asked me to give you the enclosed letter. I think I should reiterate that some of your accusations, such as wife abuse, are not grounds for divorce in Quebec. <laughs> oh my god. I understand you are hurt, but I do not think antagonizing your husband is very wise at the moment. Yeah, you think? Because he's a wife abuser. Uh, uh, do not forget to be in court at 11 a.m. on the 20th. Be on time. Also, a friendly reminder that my fees for January need to be paid before the end of the month. I'm happy to help you out, but I cannot work pro bono on this. Sincerely, Howard. Right. Love that. Funny how some games really stand the test of time. I used to play this with mom. You all know, the time. I have never actually played Snakes and Ladders. Funny how some games really stand the test shh, of time. Shh, Sophie. I used to play this with mom all the time. I didn't mean to click on it twice. Aha. Ah. Keys are Snoop's best friend. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. So there's one, and it's on the dish. Beside the table. Sounds like this is from your school days, but the name of the sender is smudged. December 26, 1945. Dear Anne, you are right. I missed the snow already. It's so hot right now in Texas. It's quite a shock after the cool weather of Montreal. My family has never seen snow before, and I could not find the words to tell them how beautiful it is. They don't understand what they are missing. I wish I could build my brothers a snowman like the one we built together a few weeks ago. I know it's childish, but I had not had that much fun in years. Christmas was exhausting. Nine days of eating, singing, dancing. It's great fun, but I'm glad it's over so I can rest a little. Of course, celebrations will resume for New Year, but it gives me a few days to relax. How are things going with your family? I know you don't get along well, but I hope you are still able to have a good time. I will leave for Montreal on the 8th. I cannot wait to be back. I miss finding black cat hairs all over my clothes. I miss our late night studying sessions at Harry's. I even miss Sister Miller's glasses, if you can believe it. We'll see you soon. Warm wishes. Somebody. P? <gasps> Wait, could that be Beth? B E T. I feel like that could be Beth. Hmm. Ornate wooden chest. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, I can find a key. Wait, but. Key. I think I can open the chest now. Oh, you only have one key. What's this? I'm not done snooping. Okay. To Anne Bercy. Subject Michael's withdrawal from school. Dear Mrs. Bercy. We have successfully processed your request to withdraw your son, Michael Bursey, from his school schedule and system under the agreement that you will continue his education from home. Following this letter, you will receive the list of books and school materials you need to purchase in order to follow the curriculum from home. A social worker will be in touch to help you understand our milestones so that your son can benefit from our programs from the comfort of his home. Thank you for thinking of your son's education, Director Donald Byron. Okay, what's this? Lolan set la grande partout, nouvelle edition, Michael. Okay. Oh. The fastest way on rail is through the Midwest. Midwestern Railway. Oh, what's this? So you were eager to set up a meeting, but didn't want anyone noticing. Hmm. I hope you are well in spite of the circumstances. We've been on the train for two days now. It's a long ride, made even longer by the fact I cannot wait to see you again. We are scheduled to arrive in Montreal on the eve of Valentine's Day. I booked room 509. It's a marital suite. When we arrive, please refrain from talking to me until we can figure out a safe way to see each other. Say hello to Michael for me and Mrs. Beaumont. Clarington Hotel. Okay. All right. I see what's going on here. Look, I'm not going to snitch on them. Hmm. Oh. 
keep battery out, battery chamber would not be used. So I could get a battery out of there if I need. Oh, Michael. Adults can be so confusing. I promise it's not you. Dad, I'm sorry, but Mom asked me not to tell you the name of our hotel. She allowed me to talk about our room, though. We have two little beds, a radio, and even a television. Mom let me build a fort, and the maid brought us extra blankets. She's really nice. The hotel is nice, too, but I miss home. I wish Mom and you could be happy, and I wish everything could go back to the way it was before. But Mom says it's impossible. She says she no longer loves you. Do you think she'll ever stop loving me, too? Aww. I'll need another key to unlock this. Haven't I seen one just like this somewhere? Keys, keys, the keys. I don't think I've ever used so many in one day. Not content to open with one key. This fussy chest requires two, which is a little daunting. But Anne wouldn't have brought the chest without both keys, right? I'll just have to look around. Should be easier now that I know what I'm looking for. It's not designed like your everyday key after all. That key looks so familiar. Why do I associate it with room 505? What are you guys doing, Sophie? Probably because it's in there. I feel like there was a key on the back of a picture frame or something. I don't think I'll need this again. I genuinely don't remember where the key is. I probably should, but it's been a while since I've played this. And so I don't remember. Um, but I'll find it. If it takes too long, I will. Was it in here? If it takes too long, I'll, I'll cut to when I find it. Oh boy. Someone's been living it up. God, did I not do this before? Holy shit. Not exactly a cherished gift. If you just left it behind like this. I'm not going home without a prize. Dear my beloved Leanne, much as I would have loved to spend this Valentine's Day with the woman who was about to become Miss my Mrs. Hubert, I'll happily make do with the lifetime of Valentine's Day is awaiting us. Enjoy your week in Montreal. I'll be eagerly awaiting your return and the start of our new life together. Love, Gregory. P.S. Don't let Simone rip you into anything crazy. Tell her I need my bride back in one piece. Good lord. It seems like they... All that's missing are the pillows. To get the pillows. Pillows all over the place. Uh, it's fine. Did he really just scold us for talking? These Montreal cab drivers, I swear. I know, I thought he'd appreciate us trying to make conversation. Thank God for good old-fashioned pen and paper, at least. Yeah, it takes me back. At least Sister Gabrielle isn't here to confiscate them anymore. So like I was saying, are you ready for your week-long bridal shower, Mrs. Hubert? Stop it, Simone. I'm not Mrs. until we walked down the aisle, and this week is for thinking about anything but that. 
That's right, we're making the most of this week before I lose you to the jaws of marital life. I would never. I won't be another Andrea, I promise. Leanne, he's going to kick us out if you keep making me laugh. The Montreal Tourism Association, 1957 to 1958. <laughs> Cute. So they were like passing notes back and forth in the cab. It's kind of adorable. Wow, that's a lot of bottles of champagne. I guess it's her bachelorette party. Another fan of the gossiper. I never did finish that article from this morning. Gracie Jones, feels dirty like little so secrets. long ago now. <laughs> Raphael Cosmetics. I'm not gonna read that. Uh, wait. What's this? Clean, clean, cleaning everything. Oh my god. Sorry for the mess. <laughs> I mean, you made more mess than your effort to apologize, so. Not the best, but. Clean, 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 Scrapey, 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 scrap, scrap. One shoe. <laughs> Can I get, uh, towels? Where's my cart? Another day, another dirty dish to pick up. I'm sure I'll find more laundry to add to the pile. Where's new towels, though? Well, oh, there's a balloon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. I think we have properly cleaned. I genuinely don't know where to find the other key. Um, give me a minute. I'm gonna. I I've gotta go like scouring. And I know the video is getting long at this point, so I'm probably going to cut most of this out. But here we go on a hunt. <sighs> okay. She said 505. Oh! J ah, there you are. With Marcella. God knows where she is. Clarington Hotel reception desk. Beth. Hey, Beth. Bean, I've been meaning to speak with you. Oh, about what? Well, a little birdie told me Mr. Morgan and Mr. Cruz had an argument yesterday evening. Really? Who's your little birdie? Jacques. Apparently it got so heated he had to get involved. And listen to this. It sounds like I was on the right track, because he heard a particular word thrown around quite a lot. Want to guess what it is? Cowabunga. <laughs> blackmail. Um, blackmail. Blackmail? No, that was your theory, remember? Oh, it's a fair. It's a fair. A fair? Okay. Hmm. Did Jack hear anything else? From what he told me, it seemed like Mr. Cruz was accusing Mr. Morgan of having an affair with his wife. Wouldn't have expected Mrs. Cruz to fall for a man like Morgan, but I guess the heart wants what the heart wants. Maybe, but that doesn't explain Mrs. Beaumont's involvement with Mrs. Cruz. What do you mean? I found a chest in room 507. They're I think also it can only be an opened by turning two keys at once. I found one of them in Mrs. Beaumont's things. Oh, and the 
other one? Well, I or remembered maybe they're seeing just... a similar key in one of Mr. Morgan's you know what? stocking pictures, so I went back to check. Mrs. Cruz wears it as a pendant. It looks identical to Mrs. Beaumont's key. Wait, so Mrs. Beaumont and Mrs. Cruz own identical keys that are both needed to open a mysterious chest? Yeah, there's definitely something going on here. Yeah, something going on here, but... I think it might be that they're just conspiring to get each other out of their shitty marriages that they are not into, right? It could be just that. Or it could be that they're lovers. Or it could be both. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but the answers probably lie in that chest, and I don't think I'll be able to open it. I've looked around room 509. I would have seen the second key if it was there. Mrs. Cruz must have left with it this morning. Hmm, yeah. We were so close. I can't believe it all ends here. Well, hold on. I may have an idea. Get me a candle and some plaster. Yeah. And maybe I can do something about that pesky chest. How? I'll tell you later. Just find me those things and I'll meet you in the basement as soon as I manage to leave my post. All right. Thank you for not giving Dad, up. Dad, you are such Come a fucking on, real I one. Let you down. <laughs> no, she would never. <laughs> She's the best. Candle and plaster. I... Oh, close that. Nope, close it. I don't know if I have seen a candle or a plaster, but next time we're gonna look for those things. <laughs> okay this has been this bed we made hope you had a good time love you so much sophie is eternally rotating and spiraling just like me just like all of us okay bye